to truly believe in the magic. Hey, Magic fans, and uh, welcome to Penny for Your Thoughts, the podcast of the Orlando Magic UK. Nice to see the appearance of the Christmas Elf to start the gig, the, the gig off today. I'm Paul, host for this week. Um, we'll be bringing you current talk about uh, the road trip west, and we're also going to be joined by former Orlando, Orlando Magic power forward Jeff Turner, now in his ninth season as Orlando's television colour analyst. As always, I'm joined by Mikey. You well, mate? Absolutely, mate. Thank you. And yourself? Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, all good here, all good here. And also from the valleys, Mr. Grant. How you doing, mate? Very good, thank you. Nice to nice to come back. You uh, held the fort very well last week. So, yeah, enjoyed uh, it, mate. It was it was different. It was fun. It was fun. But it's 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 nice to have the three of us. I think, and uh, you know, we we all have opinions to give, and I think it's good to hear. It's good to hear. Now, That's it. I will address wait, wait, wait. the. Go on, mate. I was just going to say, we're not going to be able to have a Christmas party this year, are we? Well, not Boris will. Not a, Boris will, yeah. E- <laughs> Evening <laughs> Prime Minister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there won't be any cheese and wine involved with ours. More likely, touch of the, black, of the dark stuff. Uh, but yes, um, you will notice if you are watching on YouTube that the three of us do have identical jumpers on. It isn't that we are particularly sad, but we are recording on Friday. It is National Christmas Jumper Day. So it is uh, traditionally in support to save the children from. But if you want to make a donation to any charity of your choice, we would love you to do that. Um, it's a cracking cause and we're happy to support it. And we're so, sad. Oh yeah, yeah. Any any opportunity to wear a jumper, a Christmas jumper with magic on it, mate. We don't really need much of an excuse, do we? So should we jump into it? Get a bit of magic news down. Go for yeah. it. Right. Okay. So let's start with the injuries. No change. JI, Markel, MCW, Jalen, and Etwan Moore, all still out. No updates further. So let's move on. Uh Monday we played the Golden State Warriors. Uh they took the game <coughs> 96 to 126. Uh in all honesty, Orlando were pretty much masters of their own downfall. Started the game with a 9-0 run, pushing it to a 12-2 lead. What followed was a 19-3 run by Golden State, including five from deep in less than six minutes. From that point, there was little that Magic could do to contain the quality of the best team in the league. Steph Curry ended with 31 points, Andrew Wiggins with 28. Um, and Orlando Mistakes, as we say, certainly contributed to uh, helping the Warriors. 22 turnovers from the Magic were converted into 38 points by Golden State. Um, Wednesday, we played Sacramento uh, and we were edged out in what was a, a game that exploded offensively. 130 to 142, the Magic lost. Uh, and let's be honest, there was no defence played by either team. Um, by the final buzzer, both teams had had season highs on points scored. The Kings had shot 54, over 54% uh, from the field and almost 40, uh, sorry, 44% from three points. And the final result was really helped by a turnover laid in third quarter from Orlando, which really did prove decisive. It opened the game up. So, our record is now five wins, 21 losses, 14th in the Eastern Conference above Dem- uh, Denver. No, they've not moved above Detroit. <laughs> um, and we've won one of our last 10 played, now being on a three game losing streak. Home record re- re- reads two wins in 10 games played. And on the road, it's three wins in 16 games played. So, G. Thoughts of the week, mate. What, what's your thought on this week? Anything at um, all? Well, turnovers continue to be a problem, as you've mentioned. And, you know, they they lead to transition points for the other teams. Um, noted, you know, um, against Golden State, we got beat 20 to 13. Um, and we got, well, no, the fast break points against Sacramento weren't too bad. They only scored nine off our turnovers. But that continues to be a problem. Um, we seem to still be getting stuck in these uh, offensive holes where teams go on 12 nil runs. Um, that's essentially, you know, knocking us out of the game. Uh, we we can make runs as we've seen, um, but we've got not got enough offense. Um, positives, um, as you guys have mentioned before, uh, Franz Wagner is becoming a star, uh, handling the ball, making right decisions, uh, creating his own shot. 
uh, literally doing anything. Um, it might be a bit early, but he kind of reminds me a little bit of like Scotty Pippen, um, like a, a really good like Robin, if you know what I mean. Um, it was also good to see Cole Anthony have uh, a bounce back game because um, obviously he struggled against Golden State yep. uh, and he, he lit Sacramento up. Uh, it's just a shame, like you mentioned, Paul, we couldn't play a lick of defence. Um, other than that, it's like what Cole Anthony said on, on the pod squad, you know, they're learning and uh, the wins aren't that important at the moment. It's nice to get some. So let's just continue to uh, continue to get better. Mikey, where are you with this week? What's your thoughts? Let's start with the Warriors. It was what we feared would happen after we had a really nice, bright start to that game. What was it, a 10, 10 and 0 start? We thought uh, 9 0, and uh, we pushed it to 12 2. That's right. And you're thinking, we might, we might make a game of this tonight, but I think it was in the second quarter. It soon got out of hand. And I think they were 20 for 40 from the three point line. When you when you're letting teams like the Warriors score 126, you've you've got to have one hell of a night to to be winning games like that. It's and and the Kings game. I mean, G's really covered most of it. Uh, the Kings game, we didn't play a lick of defense. The, there was no uh, no real intensity on the defending the three point line. Uh, that's been an issue. Offensively, the numbers are there. Offensively, we're putting up points. But the problem is we're not getting back in transition. We're not. We're not. Uh, we're not stopping teams getting into the paint. We're not defending the rim properly. Teams are then being able to kick the ball out to the three. Um, yeah, it's not. It's, it's what we kind of expected from the Warriors game. I think yeah. we all expected a little bit more against the Kings. But I guess we didn't expect to see Andrew Wiggins go eight of ten from downtown. There was that as well. That was a bit of a surprise, yeah. wasn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, and what did you think, Paul? For me, I'm uh, I'm going to go with somebody who's not getting lots of minutes, but whenever he's asked to play, comes on and gives it his all. I thought Robin Lopez played really, really yeah. well against Sacramento. Um, he he battled for everything. He encourages play whether he's on the court or not. He's encouraged encouraging people he's wanting to be involved um, and I think it was it was 11 12 points he, he registered in a short period of minutes but he played really really well and was a really good force in that second unit and I was extremely impressed by him um, so that's, that's what I'm going with this week just, just something different um, I'm sure we're going to come to talking about Gary Harris in a bit uh, because his play has improved this week. I also think RJ's had a reasonable week as well. I think his offence is, is starting to improve. Um, except, against except, Sacramento, I think it was, he played well. Yeah, I think, was it 17? But I think it was, he, he did have te- yeah. six turnovers in that game, which oh, was yeah. a bit of an issue. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah. Gee, I'm, I'm going to have to come, I'm going to have to ask you. We've not, we've not had a ref rant this week, so come on, man. Because I know that there's a couple that you were not happy with. <laughs> Well, that's going back a bit now. I've uh, I've calmed down, so um, I'm just thinking this week. Um, obviously, I didn't understand why Mo Bamba got a technical foul against Thank you. the There's Sacramento the one I was Kings. Thinking of. Um, can we get an explanation, please? And there was a two minute um, uh, breakdown, I think, from a couple of games ago, and you know, two calls didn't go in in our favour. I can't remember which game it was um, down the stretch. So. Um, yeah, I mean, Mark Davis hasn't officiated, so uh, I can't really vote, can I? <laughs> <laughs> but, mate, I, you, I knew you'd got to have something to say about Mo Bamba's technical, because I just had no understanding of that one at all. I don't don't get it. Yeah. Don't get it. No, uh, neither I've, do I, I've, mate. I watched I've it actually, back. Yeah, I had a look at the rule, and even then, I was like, I, no, I've got no appreciation of where that came from but hey it happened there we go so shameless plug um, as you know we're affiliated to the NBA League Pass 
Fanatics and NBA Store Europe. So if you're looking to pick up a Christmas present or two, please join their websites by clicking off uh, the affiliate links on our social media pages and website. Also, if you use the Magic UK 10 code at the uh, checkout, you uh, may be eligible for an extra 10% discount with Fanatics and the NBA Store Europe. Some exclusions may apply. And in all honesty, there may be other discounts available that are better rates. International shipping is also offered and Fanatics does carry a whole range of different jerseys, not just NBA. They have the NFL, NHL, MLB and loads of football teams uh, for our friends in the States. Soccer, it's football. And uh, as G's been tweeting out, lots of different uh, team ones, including a, a beautiful Leeds United throwback shirt. We finally, we finally got my team on there, so I'm happy. I'm happy. I right. did promise you, mate. I did promise you. Did. You. you did, mate. So let's move on now and be joined by the one and only Jeff Turner. Well, we are now joined by a man with 612 NBA regular season games under his belt uh, in a career with the New Jersey Nets and with our very own Orlando Magic, making his second appearance on the show, Jeff Turner. JT, welcome. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. Just, uh, I'm just feel like I'm so far away from you guys. Just, uh, what are we, what are we talking about? Eight hour difference here. So yeah, eight hour we're just difference. getting going. It's lunchtime here in LA and, and you guys are burning the the evening oil now. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, how, how's the LA weather? Better than uh, the UK, no doubt. It, it's um, kind of surprising. You know, when you're packing, you kind of have to pack for a little bit of everything. But uh, it's cool here. It's in the, you know, really? 50s and uh, it's been raining oh. a little bit. It never rains in Southern California, they tell us. But uh, it's not been great. So I think David, uh, David and I are going to get out and try to take a walk today maybe uh see what's happening down on venice beach has uh david remembered to bring a coat this time uh, david's got his coat this time uh <laughs> he packed all of his ties so yeah i think he's okay <laughs> <laughs> so jt fresh from trying to get yourself a uh, technical foul on the uh broadcast <laughs> 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 Mikey, what brilliant. have you got to say about that? Well, I was going to say next time, if you want to attempt it again, Paul's got a little floss move that you could uh, teach him, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that, that, might get, that might get the referee's attention next time, but that was funny. That was very, very funny. That will get you ejected, mate. If you try my <laughs> floss movement, that will get you ejected from the arena instantly. Oh. My daughter, every, t- every time that they have, when we're in the Amway, every time that they bring the Fortnite cam on, my daughter is begging me, for God's sake, Dad, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> there is just she gets, uh, her words are, are I cannot believe how uncoordinated you are um, <laughs> I'd love to be able to argue but I can't but there we go <laughs> but the stiff floss I think we'll call it Paul the stiff floss hey? <laughs> it's, it's certainly something mate it's certainly something <laughs> JT you, you're going to have to have a look on our feed because uh, Mikey put it out the other day on uh, Twitter honestly I, I I would love to say that beer was involved. It wasn't. I was stone cold sober. I mean, genuinely that bad and that uninhibited about doing stupid stuff. As, as we clearly saw with yourself with the whole thing there. Did David give you the hundred, by the way? No, no, because I didn't. I didn't give him to uh, the referee was great. By the way, like the, that referee, Ben Taylor, um, just a really good guy. There, you know, there are, uh, some referees where if they were coming over, that that whole thing would never have happened because I might have gotten a technical and I might have gotten thrown <laughs> out. Um, but um, or laugh uh, when we were in a break, I, I asked, I, I pointed out to Ben, he was still standing in front and I, I yelled at him and told him that, hey, you cost me a hundred dollars. Um, because all I needed you to do was at least <laughs> smile or laugh or something. Uh, and he told me that um, he said, "Well, if you'd have done anything more, like if you'd have, you'd have flipped me the bird or something," he said, <laughs> "then you would have been my first uh, first broadcaster that I threw out of a game." So I said, like, "Come on, now I'm going to do that to you." So, um, but he's he's a really good guy, and afterwards uh, he laughed and. Uh, 
and smiled about it because he understood what I was trying to do. Because, uh, but man, was he he was laser focused? Because yes, he was. The, the whole the whole po- point of it was our broadcast position. The the camera is like <clears throat> up on a, maybe a two foot thing above the table, so it's right in our sight lines. I'm ba- I'm really sitting right behind that camera. Um, so, you know, we, you know, the David, you guys were listening. So, you know, David and I started talking about it. It's like, it's like Ben was like looking right at me while he's talking. And then that's when David said, I'll give you a hundred bucks. if You can make him laugh. And, and it was game on, right. I'm, you know, I'm never one to shy away from making a few dollars. So, um, <laughs> well, I'm going to, so I'm going to say, I'm going to say Jeff, that if you are not the number one, play of the week on NBA action this week on the court side <laughs> countdown you have been robbed <laughs> but you know, I don't know like the, you know the whole thing was it was the whole all about the context of it right like you know the us talk bantering back and forth um you know it was funny David got a text uh with his whole family to have a text spread thread when they watched the games and David one of his daughters said uh text the whole family and said if you're not watching this is this is Dad and Jeff at their best. This is what they do. You know, they're just being themselves. And uh, David and I laugh. You know, when we go get coffee in the morning, whatever. That's that's who we are. We just you know, you know. Oh, look at that. You know, you know, a hundred dollars if you can make that guy laugh, or you know, something like that. We're just being ourselves. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing on the broadcast, but. Um, it seems that's that's what we do. So, <laughs> well, I'm going to tell fun. you. G, G messaged us straight away with a picture of you like that. And <laughs> just a, sim, a single word underneath. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it was it was great. And I think that one that one phrase that G came out with there just sums it up. Brilliant, mate. Honestly, <laughs> made the broadcast. Made the broadcast. It was brilliant. So. On that note, I suppose we all get to a, a bit of serious business. Um, Jeff, you won't be aware, we've been running a competition uh, recently for f- people to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, the NBA Store Europe and Fanatics UK have been good enough to give us a uh, Orlando Magic Jalen Suggs jersey to give away. And we've reached the target and the prize has been, the or the result has been made, the draw has been made. And... Jeff, we would love if you would be so good as to announce the winner. Uh, so the, over to you. The winner is? The winner of the Jalen Suggs jersey is Neil Piper. Congratulations, so, Neil. Well, Excellent. Well, Neil. Thank Very you. Nice. Excellent. And, and to everybody that entered, subscribed, commented, we appreciate you and thank you. And the, we will be running another competition, which I'm going to come to shortly. So... Uh, stay tuned but Jeff thank you very much for doing that Mikey over to you yep so uh, JT so moving on um, you were part of the success the Magic obviously had in the mid 90s but you're also part of the teams that had their struggles (laughs) in the very beginning so if you were uh, if if anybody was to ask you off for this team what would your advice be for this young group for the rest of the season because obviously we've we've had our difficulties so far Yeah, I think, you know, the one thing and um, one of the great things about traveling this year is, um, you know, we're we're in the hotels, we're, you know, traveling on the buses with the guys and the coaching staff, too. And um, so I think one of the big things when I, you know, spend a lot more time with the coaches than the players. Um, and, and the big thing for me is when they ask me about, you know, those, my career in the early days and everything, and we talk about it is, I think the big thing for this team is to just keep com- being competitive. Um, you know, it's hard to win in the NBA. Uh, and, you know, we've talked a lot about, I think on the broadcast and some of the early shows, it's hard for young teams to win. Um, it takes going through the the growing pains and things. So, uh, um, you know, for me, I think the big thing is, and and I think for the most part, Jamal Mosley and his staff have done this, is be competitive every night, every possession, every play. And I think what's what we've seen, you know, this is an Orlando Magic team that I think um, at the time we're doing this, going into the 
uh, Los Angeles Clipper game uh, tomorrow, um, we're fourth, I think, uh, in fourth quarter scoring. Uh, and a lot of that is because, you know, no matter who Jamal puts on the, the floor, if we're down a lot, if we're close, um, whoever comes in, they're competing. They're always competing and playing hard. Um, and I think that's great, especially for young teams or, you know, whether they're uh, trying to make their name in the league or, or uh, you know, just kind of identify that they belong, that you got to be able to compete night in and night out each possession. And so I think that's the most important thing for a young team. Uh, when you're losing, you know, like we've been losing, let's go face it. It's hard. You're five and 21 at this point, you're a quarter of the way through the season. And with only five victories, I think that's, that's a challenge uh, night in and night out to be prepared and to compete. Um, and I, I really think that that's one of the things that Jamal Mosley has done a great job of is really got these guys um, playing very hard. They make mistakes. You know, we see it, right? It's, it doesn't lie. Um, but they, they are competing. They play really, really hard. And I think that's a great way if you're building a culture, if you're building a team, that has to be the number one thing where, you know, you come out and you're playing at a high level uh, from an intensity standpoint every night. Cool. Um, Jeff, having spent eight years as a basketball coach yourself at Lake Highland Prep School in Orlando between 2005 and 2013, where you compiled a 151-72 record and won a state championship. Um, tell us about the challenges of being a coach and what Coach Mosley um, has to deal with on a day-to-day basis as he develops these young players and moulds them into you know, uh, successful basketball players. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, Jamal and I have had uh, these conversations uh, you know, I, I remember uh, right before um, his first game, you know, as a coach, I, uh, I walked over to him and asked him how he's doing and um, everything. And he's like, you know, I think I'm as prepared as I can be. And I said, you know, stepping into this position for the first time, we talked about all the, the differences. When I went to uh, be a high school coach, I had never coached. I had never been an assistant coach or anything like that. I was a player. I, you know, I came from being a player and a broadcaster. And, you know, in those roles, I think your, your, your viewpoint, your, the way you look at the game is very narrow. You know, you're looking as a broadcaster, I'm kind of looking play to play as a player. I'm really focused on my responsibilities and what I have to do for the team as a coach, as the head coach, Everything is from, you know, I I call it looking from above 40,000 feet. You have to be able to see everything. And um, I was laughing with him and I said, as well as you are, you think you're prepared, you're going to forget something. And so I told him the story. uh, My first game as a high school basketball coach, you know, I had my game plans. I had everything ready. One of the things that I hadn't really thought about coming from the NBA to coaching high school was the structure of the game is different. You know, we played quarters, the timeouts are different, right? I come from the NBA and they changed the NBA timeouts. Now that what we used to have, what was called a 20 second timeout, right? And so, you know, the signal was two hands to the shoulder, 20 second. That was different from a full timeout. Well, they had shorter timeouts in high school, but they didn't have a 20 second timeout. And I really hadn't spent a whole lot of time thinking about that. And so my the very first, you know, first, you know, couple minutes of the game, I wasn't happy with my team. I jumped up off the bench and I yelled, time out. And the referee comes over and I said, 20 seconds. And so, you know, I'm a former NBA player and in the Orlando area, you know, they all know who I am. And so I had a very uh very smart referee, young referee that walked over to me and said, uh, Coach Turner, we don't have 20 second timeouts in high school basketball. <laughs> and I just looked at him and I realized that he was right. I didn't, I hadn't prepared for that. And I just said, 
well, what I'm going to say to the team is going to take more than 20 seconds. So my team will be back. <laughs> but my point to Jamal was, is like, you're going to, you know, he laughed when I told Jamal the story, he laughed. And you can't possibly be ready for every situation because you haven't been in it. And so I think for Jamal, I think, it's, it's interesting watching him because he's coming from an assistant coach, a development coach. Jamal loves to be on the floor with the players. Um, I hope when you guys get a chance to come over to the States to see a game, you'll you know get there early enough to see. He'll be out on the floor before the game. He's got his game stuff on and he's playing defense on them and – I mean, he he thrives on that. He loves that. You, you're not going to see a lot of head coaches in the NBA doing that. Um, so he's learning that he's got to step back from that a little bit and, you know, be prepared and get his thoughts to coach from what I call 40,000 feet and to be able to manage the game. So I think for him, that's the adjustment that he has to make. And he's doing a great job of it. I, I think he's doing a fabulous job. Um, he is so full of energy and positivity that it's just it's just a lot of fun to watch. So, um, you know, those are those are the kind of things that he's struggling with. And anybody that steps in and becomes a head coach for the first time, I think it's just a whole different way of looking at it. Yeah. So, Jeff, I'm, I'm going to ask you something slightly different. Well, it, it carries on with the youth side of things, but uh, during summer league, we had uh, Daryl Armstrong on, and uh, he told us um, about how you bringing in his high school song and him having to sing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I was just wondering what other uh, chores or uh, antics did you get up to with uh, some of the young players, and have you heard anything around what's happening with... Uh, some of our young guys if uh, they're being initiated you know it's it's funny the, the um you know it's always uh it, it's funny uh when you because like you know but it just seemed like before when i was playing right there were like guys were you know we only had 12 guys on the roster so when you brought a rookie and a young guy you know there was only one or two usually and um you know one of the first things that you start with and uh, whether it's training camp or practice or something like that, it's just to give you know, give them a hard time. You make them sing, right? And so one of the things that uh, you know it was always a thing. It was like, okay, well, sing your you know, sing your college fight song or something like that, um, or your alma mater or or something. And inevitably, what happened was the guys would say, well, I don't know the words, you know, I know the tune and, you know, they'd sing the tune. And, but so I just got the brilliant idea that, okay, I'm not going to give them an out, you know, like if you, you can't just say, I don't know the words. So if we were going to do it that day, if, you know, I would talk with the other vets in case of Daryl Armstrong, um, you know, okay, today's the day. We'll sing. I was like, okay, well, what do you want to start with? And he said, well, let's just start with the well, their fight song. We'll do that. So I go and I find, I get online and I look up Fayetteville State's uh, fight song. I printed out the words and sure enough, Daryl, you know, well, I, I don't know what the words are. And I was like, hold on. And I, just pulled, I handed in the sheet of paper. He knew the tune. Right. He remembered the tune and he was like, everybody just dying laughing and he did it, you know. And so I think that's funny that he remembers it uh, nowadays. Well, here's the difference. Right. Like, look at the magic. We've got one of the youngest teams in the league. Right. So Cole Anthony is what, 21 years old. And he's calling Jalen Suggs his rookie. You know, you know, I'm, I'm the vet. And so. Um, I know I've been in some practices where they'll make the young guys um, sing happy birthday to, you know, somebody in the organization's having a birthday or something like that. You know, they'll do all those things. Um, it's changed a lot. Boy, you know, it used to be, I remember when Shaquille O'Neal uh, was a rookie. Um, we had Terry Catledge on our team and Terry was a big coffee drinker in the morning and he would make Shaquille uh, go out and get him coffee first thing in the morning and deliver it to his room. 
Um, and then as Shaquille became the vet, things got, uh, you know, he carried it on throughout the whole year. Um, there are some uh, legendary stories of uh, Shaquille O'Neal and what he did to rookies and what he asked them to do. Um, and, and, and so it, it just, you know, it's just changed a lot, I think, because the guys are so young. There's no vet to really tell them, you know, this is what this is what you do kind of. Um, I will tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, you know, I remember some of the things that, uh, Shaquille would do to, you know, some of the rookies, Brooks Thompson, uh, that played for us out of Oklahoma state, uh, Shaquille worked him an entire year. It wasn't just the once Robin Lopez, who was with us was a rookie with the Phoenix Suns, Suns. in 2008. Remember Shaquille played for the Suns that year. And Robin tells the story that they were in, they were traveling sometime on the road in training camp and the coaching staff, Steve Nash, I think it, uh, no, I guess Steve was playing then. So maybe Steve Kerr or somebody that was in the front office, they had a dinner, a big dinner at a real fancy restaurant uh, on the road and uh, white linen tables, you know, they were big restaurant there was it was packed and he said Shaquille had Robin I can't remember who there were like three rookies in training camp he had them all get up in the middle of the dining room and made them do defensive slides back and forth <laughs> between the tables now you can imagine Robin Lopez at seven feet tall 280 pounds doing slides I can't imagine how he was able to do that and navigate the table. But uh, Robin, you know, said that Shaquille was the hardest he'd ever seen on a rookie. So, and I believe that. <laughs> well, J well, JT, we, we've got a fourth member on the team now, Connell, who's uh, just joined us. And I think he's just turned 20. Am I right? 20, yeah. yeah. So uh, we're hoping to get him on the podcast in the next few weeks. Oh, so cool. we need to, so we need to figure out some rookie rook hazing. There Absolutely. So we need to find out his uh, high school fight song and get Connor to sing on his episode. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So JT, your Kapaya calls uh, are becoming something legendary and uh, we often find ourselves, you know, going Kapaya like, like you do. Um, so can you tell us how the catchphrase came about and do you have uh, a Kapaya call that stands out for you? Oh, well, yeah, I've told the story several times. I, you know, the, the Kapaya for me is, um, uh, it's, it's funny because, um, uh, it's for me, it's, it's a link to the beginnings. You know, you, you, you asked me about those early days, uh, with the magic. And, um, so the, the story behind the Kapaya is we were playing a game, um, I, you know, second, third year, whatever it was, you know, what's those teams back then before Shaquille came, right? Like we were a collection of guys, uh, you know, we were adding picks. We picked Nick Anderson. We added Dennis Scott. And, but the rest of us were kind of free agents or, you know, we were unprotected guys in the draft and we were all kind of fighting, right? Like for, for our, spots you know to, that we belonged in the nba so very competitive practices were competitive we were tough on each other um so one night we're playing the golden state warriors and tim hardaway uh the father not tim hardaway jr that yeah. plays for that but tim hardaway was just having one of those nights and he was making Every shot, just the crossover, the jumpers, everything. And Terry Catledge and Jerry Reynolds were both out of the, they were both hurt. Uh, and they were sitting at the end of the bench. And Scott Skiles is trying to guard Tim Hardaway. And every time Tim would make a shot, and I, I know they were down in front of our bench because we could hear it. So every time Tim would make a shot, we would hear Kapaya, Kapaya. And Jerry Reynolds is basically calling Kapaya every time Tim Hardaway hits a shot. And Skiles, you guys know the legend of Scott Skiles. 
His face is getting red. He's <laughs> mad. <clears throat> Not just because Hardaway is, you know, but now his teammate is basically cheering Tim Hardaway on. <laughs> and the rest of us, whether we're in the game, we know what's happening. And it's 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 kind of funny because <laughs> we know what it's doing to Skiles, how angry he is. And anytime we could get under Skiles' skin, all of us, we loved it. And so it just became one of those things that after the game, we're all roll. I think we got blown out, but we're all rolling because Skiles is so mad at Jerry Reynolds. And we've this word, you know, kapaya, kapaya is just ringing in our ear. And so I asked Jerry later, I was like, "Where? what is it? What is kapaya? And Jerry said, you know, like when we were kids and we were play, you know, like pretend like, you know, cops and robbers or whatever, when we were kids, the fake noise of the gun was kapaya, kapaya, (laughs) you know, and I I had never heard that. Um, And so that's where it started, right? So when I became a broadcaster, uh, I was doing radio with uh, David to start with and then Dennis Newman. Um, Just I don't know, one night, you know, somebody hit a shot and everything, and I just gave it a kapaya, you know, and everybody, people seemed to like it, and um, and it just went on from there. So it's just one of those things. You know, my wife is like, you know, I used to do it a lot more, and my wife was like, yeah, you're overdoing it. You know, you just <laughs> pick your spots, you know. She's like, I don't even, I think you should stop doing that. And I said, well, if I stop doing that, then everybody's going to be mad at me, you know, that, why don't you do it anymore? Um, so I said, I'll do that. I'll just pick my spots. Um, so now let me think, what was my bet? My biggest, oh, wow, that's a tough one. Um, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll just say this. I, I think probably, and you guys, I, I, you would probably agree with me. One of the best times to be a Magic fan uh, for me as, as a broadcaster was when Tracy McGrady was uh, with us and, you know, at leading the league and scoring. And, you know, I always say Tracy's one of those guys that, you know, I'd spend my last dollar to see him play. Um, he was just that exciting. So I'm pretty sure I had quite a few very excited kapayas uh, when T-Mac was, uh, you know, having one of those nights and everything. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's just hard. You know, guys, it's like when you're, Kapaya is great when you're winning, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's just hard to find that right time right now. So we'll we'll, we'll do we'll try to get it more. It will come. More it will come. In there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had, be, I had be, my money on the uh, DJ Augustine dagger against Toronto. Yeah. There you go. That was one. That's a good one. Yeah. That, there you go. That's a one. Sure. That was a great so. one. I still I still think we need to do a Jeff Says Kapaya t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, think, I well. still think that needs to be done. It needs to be done. So, Jeff, <laughs> I want to just ask you about um, the veteran play of Gary Harris, Terence Ross, and as you've already mentioned, Robin Lopez. Uh, it's become really noticeable over the last couple of weeks. Um, what's impressed you most about each guy, and what do you believe collectively they are bringing to the team? Well, you know, the the big thing is, uh, you know, Gary Harris kind of, you know, got to a little bit of a slow start. Um, You know, he's missed so much time over the last couple of years with injuries and everything. But, well, I tell you, you know, if you're you're watching, I think we talked about on the broadcast the other night, he's moved into the starting lineup due to injuries, first for Cole and now, you know, with Jalen being sidelined a little bit. And so his minutes as a starter are coming up. And so he's playing, you know, 30 plus minutes a game. And his numbers have been really solid during that time. I think, you know, we, uh, I was looking this morning, you know, he's averaging about 13, almost 14 points a game over the last six. And, you know, the numbers, he's starting to shoot it a little bit better, 35, 36% from three. Um, So his contributions on the floor have been, uh, have been really good. He's starting to really get into a nice rhythm. Um, and I think that's good for the guys. I think it helps the young guys when you've got veteran players who are doing good things out there. T Ross has been, um, you know, he, he went through a little bit of a stretch here at the beginning of this little, uh, slide that we've been on, uh, where he was struggling shooting the basketball. But I think over the last four or five, he's starting to 
get it in. Look, you know, for us to be successful, you know, we have to have good play from our bench. And, um, you know, Ter- Terrence is a big part of that. And so, uh, you know, as David likes to say, when we, when the torch is lit, um, you know, we, uh, you know, we seem to be in a good spot and, um, you know, he's been a big part of some of our, our late, you know, um, late, late game rallies, if you will. Robin Lopez is, uh, you know, just an interesting, interesting, not only is an interesting guy, uh, but it's interesting the way Jamal Mosley has been using him. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's been one of those things where he may not play for, you know, sometimes four or five games. And then you, you know, you look down and here he comes checking into the game. Uh, we saw that the other night in Sacramento um, where he got a call early, maybe because of a matchup because Alex Lynn was on the floor. Um, but immediately, you know, for me, for if, you know, if I'm Mo Bamba, Wendell Carter, Jr., uh, even Mo Wagner, um, you know, if you, you watch Robin, he keeps it very simple. You know, he, he sets terrific screens. Uh, and when he does that, he rolls really hard to the basket, gets himself, you know, in, a, in the paint and then gets himself, he, he gets himself really big. You know, he really spreads out and gets big. And when he does that, it's almost like you have to throw him the ball because he's so open. Uh, and then he can make his little you know, crazy hook shot, you know, left or right hand. Um, you know, he releases that thing from way down, but you can't block it. And um, so when he's come in the game, I feel like we've gotten a boost. Uh, um, and so, I, you know, my question for Coach Mosley would be, you know, when you see that, are you going to begin to use him a little bit more? Um, you know, I don't think he's uh, – a guy that, you know, the magic at this point, you know, when you're trying to develop Mo Bamba and Wendell, you don't want to take minutes from them. But, you know, I, I think there's a way to get maybe uh, 15 to 18 minutes for um, Robin on the floor. Because I think what it does, guys, is um, I, I think when young players play with veterans who do the kind of things that Robin does, whether it's setting those big screens and everything, it makes the game easier for them. It makes the game easier for Cole Anthony coming off of a big Robin Lopez screen because he's going to, his guy's going to get hit. It's going to yeah. make things easier. Uh, it's going to make things easier for, you know, our shooters, for RJ Hampton. Uh, you know, when Robin, you know, gets an offensive rebound and kicks it back out to him for a wide open feet set three. Um, so, you know, I like it when those three veterans play more because for that reason, I think for the development of the young guys, sometimes playing with good players, you know, solid players helps in that development. Okay. So JT, you mentioned, uh, Wendell and Mo as well. Um, I'd like to get your thoughts on how those two guys have developed this season, not just individually, but how they've grown together as a, as a parent in the front court. And I've got a second part to that. If you could choose, so me and Paul discussed this on last week's episode. If you could choose one thing for the two of them to improve offensively and one thing defensively, what would you like to see them really work on? Wow. Okay. Um, well, (laughs) first of all, I I think uh, (laughs) it's great. Um, you know, the, the thing that, um, I am really you know, pleasantly surprised how well the pairing has actually worked. Um, you know, for the most part, um, the fact that Wendell, who has played, you know, his whole NBA career as a, you know, five, a postman, the center position, um, is being asked to go out on the floor a little bit more and, and, and play guys off the dribble. Um, and he's done a pretty good job of it. So I think that's been um uh, you know, uh, a big part of the game. The other thing that surprised me is um, how well those two uh, work together. Um, Their interior passing has been um, pretty good. And obviously defensively with the two of them out there, um, which I think is a big reason they are with coach Mosley is we do defend the rim uh, pretty well. I mean, both of those guys do a good job of challenging shots at the rim. Um, so I think that's, that's been good. 
Um, you know, each of them, you know, with added minutes, I think they've improved uh, tremendously. Um, you know, obviously they're both so young, 23 for Mo, 22 for Wendell. Um, you know, there's, there's a, they both have high ceilings, you know, there's, there's more room for improvement, I guess. Um, you know, you guys have heard me on the, uh, on the broadcast, you know, for me, Wendell, uh, from an offensive standpoint, I think he has all the tools. I, I think he can yeah. score at, at, you know, he can score at the rim. Uh, you know, obviously he's shown that he can shoot the long ball or, you know, well enough to make teams respect him and guard him. Um, for me, you know, for Wendell, I just want him to be more selfish uh, offensively. You know, I think at times he is so committed to sharing the basketball, doing the right thing that I think there are opportunities for him to be a little bit more aggressive offensively. So, you know, when I say selfish, you know, that I think that probably has a negative connotation, but uh, I just want him to look for his opportunities um, a little bit more. Um, you know, defensively, I think the big thing for him is just uh, continue to get better, um, you know, guarding guys out on the floor because that's all new to him, uh, you know, forcing guys – um, you know, into where into positions, you know, you can't stop guys off the dribble. It's hard to do that in the NBA, but you funnel them, you push them to where you want them to go. You tri- take away options. And I think for big guys, that's a, that's a hard thing to do. Um, and we saw that with Christian Wood when we played Houston yes. the other week, didn't we? Yeah, he, he did a very good job on Christian for the most part. But then when, you know, uh, when we play the Lakers, if you look at the way they're going, he's going to be matched up with LeBron to start. You know, so that's going to be a challenge for him, right? He's taking, yeah. forcing LeBron, you know, to his left hand maybe a little bit more. And, uh, you know, which, you know, that may not even be good enough. So, but that's the kind of things he's going to have to, you know, continue to get better. Um, Mo Bamba. Um, you know, offensively, you know, he's doing the things uh, that he can do. I think for Mo on both sides, um, it's just got to be more consistent. Um, you know, what we've seen is, you know, if you, if you go and look at his games, you know, uh, let's take his last 10 games, you'll find probably five where he's played, you know, pretty well. The numbers are good. And then you'll find five where it's like, well, you know, Maybe not so much. Um, and so I think for him, it's a continuation of finding where he can be consistent uh, at both ends of the floor. Um, you know, on nights when the three-pointer is not going down, can he, you know, go and, and, and do a good job, get it off the glass? You know, that was that's the old thing is if it's your shot's not going or, hey, the guys aren't getting you the ball, you're seven feet tall, go get it yourself. And, uh, you know, we had uh, – uh, a few nights ago, I think it was in Houston, uh, you know, Mo had a, you know, four or five offensive rebounds. So, you know, the, the game before that, the four games before that, he didn't have any offensive rebounds. So it's that consistently um, figuring out how we can help the team offensively. Uh, there's no question the talent. And then defensively, it's just, you know, the motor. The, the one thing, um, you know, Mo's got to figure out is when to go try to block a shot, right? Like, you know, kind of, you're kind of, being there, your presence, just knowing you're the fourth in the league in shot blocks, teams know that, and they're looking for you. It's just when do you go? Uh, has your teammate done a good job of he's going to force a tough shot, so if you leave, you open it up for a pass to your man and a dunk. Um, and so, But that comes with playing. And so for the first time in his career, most getting extended minutes, um, and so he's just keep he continues to learn those things. So um, I don't know if that's kind of where you guys saw the improvement, but that's, you know, when I see it, looking at it, that's kind of where I would like to see some uh, some areas where they can improve. JT, can I just ask you about um, a quick follow-up on about Mo? I remember standing at, um, in his rookie season, uh, I was over for some of the games early on in his career. I got a chance to stand with yourself and David and talk. And you asked me, you, you both asked me about Mo. And I remember yourself and David both saying that you felt that there was kind of this when he when he played on instinct, he was so, he was so much better than when he right. overthought the game. Do you think that's still part of the issue with the consistency side of things? 
I think that's probably true. I mean, you think about our, our guys, uh, well, Mo in particular, you know, it's, um, you know, the, the, there's a change of coaching staff, right? There's a different mm-hmm. philosophy. You know, Steve Clifford was very, uh, <clears throat> you know, everything was kind of scripted, uh, the, you know, the defense and things like that, where I think now, you know, uh, Jamal is asking them to be a little bit more instinctive, um, you know, without the script, you know, you're going to get more mistakes and everything. But ultimately, in the development process, um, it could end up being better in the long run for Mo to kind of, you know, have this tough education that he's getting uh, and learn from it. So, you know, I think that's I think that's a good observation um, that, you know, when he, he does play in stakes. Well, I think most guys, when they, you know, when you get to the level of playing in the NBA – you know, you're a talented player and, you know, you've probably been able to play instinctually um, for most of your career. And so, you know, when you can kind of go to that as your fallback, um, your comfort level, that probably helps. You know, the problem is, is everybody is so talented that there needs to be a nice mix of instinctual, yes, but then doing the work before in your preparation where, you know, not only do you uh, instinctually, this is what I'm going to do, you know, tendencies of the opponents, right? You know what they're going to do. Um, you know, it's, it, it, I, I'll throw, you know, we played, when we played Brooklyn, you remember the first time we played Brooklyn and LaMarcus Aldridge had a huge game, you know, I don't I mean, he made all of his shots. Well, you know, LaMarcus Aldridge is 16 years in the league and is what we know. I mean, we know he's like, you know, 15 to 20 feet, the mid-range jumper. He's really good, right? Like he's going to turn and face you. He gets you in the post. He's going to go to, you know, turnovers left shoulder. He wants to get to the right and get to the free throw line. Um, and it was almost at times he was so wide open and Mo was giving him too much room uh, that it was almost like, well, did he look at the scouting report or has he ever watched LaMarcus Aldridge? You know what I'm saying? It's so it's like, it's, you know, those are the things that young players really have to do. There's so much studying your opponent and preparation and, but that's learning, right? You, you have to learn how to do that as well. Yeah. Thank you for that, Jeff. Uh, last one. So we're looking forward to having you on our televisions at a reasonable hour tomorrow, because obviously you've got a 12.30 tip. So it's an 8.30 tip off here in the UK. So uh, we'll have the beers ready, nachos, everything else. Um, But of course, you've got Star Wars night uh, against the Heat at the end of the week. Yes. Um, On the the broadcast in the past, um, we've of course seen uh, Brian Hill and Dante uh, battling the Empire. Are we going to see you (laughs) and... uh, David tomorrow and uh, next week. I, I never say never, right? Never say never because we don't know. Like those are kind of some things that Dante cooks up and everything. And just remember what we started the broadcast with, right? You know, David saying, "I'll give you a hundred dollars if there's money involved." <laughs> there's no telling what you might be able to get JT to do, right? So I, I'm just saying, I don't know. I don't know that we'll have time to do that, but you know, we'll see what Dante cooks up for us. <laughs> I think uh, I, I think we'll be messaging David and uh, suggesting he bets you that um, you won't turn up as the princess as Princess Leia in the slave costume. <laughs> <laughs> I know they, 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 they've uh, they've uh, I guess uh, somehow done Photoshop David and I in uh, Chewbacca and uh, Han Solo costumes yeah. and things before, so you may see that one again. <laughs> well, I'm just before I, I shall have to tell you, I will be ignoring everybody tomorrow because <laughs> for some stupid reason, I have organised to be out with friends who are, they just do not like sport. So I will not be able to watch the game until ridiculous o'clock as normal. Oh, so we get an early tip over here and I shall still be watching it about one o'clock when I get in. It's ridiculous. I can't believe I've organised hey. it. It's so magic about I will, all. Any, <laughs> I, know, I will be. I will be ignoring my phone. Notifications will be off. I will be avoiding social media. So I apologise in, in advance to anybody who may be messaging me because I'm ignoring you. 
that's just that is just, that's bad scheduling, Paul. That's really bad. But I, I, I make no I, I make no excuses for myself. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> Not for the first time. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I drift through life most days, but. <laughs> I do tend to know tip times normally, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really annoyed with myself. But there we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff, we, all I can say is we appreciate you so much for coming on and supporting us in the way that you do. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to spend some time with you again. Uh, okay. We won't keep you. We'll let you go off and enjoy the delights of LA and... Uh, See what else David can get you to do for money in the rest okay. of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I always, I always enjoy being on with you guys, and uh, you know, I love telling stories. I apologize if I'm so long winded sometimes. Oh, no. but you guys ask no, great no. questions, and I, I hope I give you uh, give you a little bit of uh, information that's uh, useful for your for your listeners. You do, and you do. we know from the reactions. Everybody loves you coming on, mate. Thank you yeah. so much. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Cheers, Jeff. Have a good one. Jeff, Cheers, thank Jeff. you. Sounds good. All I can say is I absolutely love the company of Jeff Turner. Uh, he's he's just such good company to have on. Um, great stories. You guys, enjoy. Oh, love he's, listening he's the best, to Jeff. isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. The, the stories, you, you can just listen to him forever. Yeah. Yeah. I love that he apologises to us for, for talking too long. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that's what we this? wanted to do, we, we plan we plan these to be about forty minutes. And if we ever actually achieve this with the podcast, that we manage forty Never. minutes, that's no. the reason that we've gone for these shortened versions that you're putting out now, Mikey. Because <laughs> we can't do it. We try, but we just can't. We talk too much. Well, well we said so, that last week, didn't we? We said, "Oh, we'll just do a quick episode." Yeah. It's still an hour ten minutes because we were waffling on. But there we go. <laughs> just the two of us talking rubbish for an hour and ten minutes. Yeah, I can't believe good. that people actually listen to us. But there we go. So, <laughs> um, JT, as you know, has just announced the winner of the Jalen Suggs competition. Uh, Neil, congratulations from us all. Um, we are going to be dropping a new competition, so keep an eye out on our Twitter feed. Um, the prize is going to be a opening night t-shirt and a magic together pin that uh, friends in uh, the magic have very kindly sent across to us so that'll be something to uh, join in with and uh, the details will all be on our Twitter feed so keep your eyes out okay predictions guys it's uh, that time um, last week G and Connell went one all Oh, Mikey, tactical uh, voting now. <laughs> Mikey and myself went with our clear experience and knowledge of the NBA and went 0 and 2, which is exactly what the Magic did. I don't know what you're saying, G. We never mentioned that it was tactical voting. <laughs> I, lis- I listen as well, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the tactical vote worked. So uh, add, add one to the score column for uh, Mikey and myself. And, so you, uh, you guys are you you guys are now four and three. I'm three and four. So I've still got yep. the wooden spoon. Get in there, get in there, mate. But you, you're catching up. So we record next officially on Thursday the 16th. However, in between that time on Monday, we will be joined by a. I'm so excited at what we've managed to get here, Greg Anthony, NBA veteran and father of our, our Cole Anthony is joining us on this pod for a chat. Mikey, great work, mate. Great work. Hey, we all put the work in, boys. And uh, right. yeah, we can enjoy that on Monday. So that will be dropping on Tuesday once, uh, once so we've got that edited. Again, another one to keep your eyes out because that's going to be a really good opportunity to get some insight into uh, to the mind of a very, very proud father and a guy who is, yeah. as, as if as he keeps putting, the Antonys are 100% Orlando, 100% behind the magic. So, as I say, we, uh, the next pod that we're going to do like this is Thursday the 16th. So, in the meantime, we have three games. Saturday, tomorrow, 8.30pm tip in the UK. As I say, I will be ignoring you all because uh, I can't do planning, apparently. We uh, play the LA Clippers. Uh, the Clippers have a 14-12 and 12 winning record. 
are fifth in the West. Uh, of the last 10 games played, they've won five, including their last two. Home form, season winning 10 of 17 played. Last game out, they won 111 to 114 over the Boston Celtics. Then on Sunday, we have a back-to-back where we are staying in LA to play the uh, Lakers. Um, oh. That's a that's a two thirty a.m. tip, so uh, not UK friendly at all. Although uh, I'm sure that Mikey or somebody might well you may well be up. It's, it's possible. You may well be up, mate. It's yeah, very possible. You've been, uh, catching one or two, haven't you? Due to disturb nights recently. <sighs> What was the what was the game? Do you know like the one game I woke up in the middle of the night for and I couldn't get back to sleep was that horrendous game in Milwaukee. <laughs> I sat and really? watched all that. Yeah, I oh, sat and watched man. that live. But so yeah, well, anyway, we coming do. back to the Lakers, they are thirteen and thirteen this season, uh, seventh in the West. Last ten games they have also won five. Uh, last game out was a ninety five one hundred eight loss on the road to the Grizzlies. Yeah, you go Grizzlies. Um, home form sees them having won nine of 16 played. And then finally, before we record again, on Wednesday evening, um, it's a midnight Thursday tip for us. Uh, we are back home facing the Atlanta Hawks. Hawks are 13 and 12, winning record. Eighth in the East. Um, they have won seven of the last 10. So they're in a good vein of form. Uh, last game was a road win, one two one to one ten over the Timberwolves. Uh, their road form, however, isn't as good. They have uh, won five of thirteen played, still better than ours. So, opinions, boys. Let's uh, let's go with yourself first, Mikey. What are you going for? Tactical again? Well, no, no, none of this is tactical, Paul. Well, this you is can't just... go tactical. I've got to go first if it's tactical, isn't it? So I've that's written mine him. down. I've that's written mine that's down. I asked him. I, you know, okay. I'm, I'm host, so I'm going. I'm, I'm picking the order here. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm playing the percentages, and I'm going to go zero and three. And looking at our schedule, we've got some games upcoming which are on paper a little bit more winnable. So I'm going to hold out till then, <laughs> till I throw a W in there, and hopefully we can get Markel back because it seems. Like there's rumblings that he might be back very soon. And hopefully once we're back off this West Coast road trip, then we might see Markel suit back up. But I'm going to go 0-3. Non, no tactical, no it's tactical reasons. Indeed. Just, just that's what I think is going to happen. Um, so it'll also be interesting to see how much practice time the Magic get this week, because obviously we're in L.A., Got a few days off that the the team could probably go through some practices, walkthroughs, and stuff like that. And JT's already said to us uh, that the Magic are actually staying overnight after we play the Lakers. So I don't I, I don't think they're going to get back till what Tuesday afternoon back to Orlando. So they might get an extra an extra day at home to do some practice. And we saw against the Kings how much practice makes a big difference because. We couldn't stop them the other night. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I hope we win. We all hope we win some games. But I'm going to play the percentages and go 0 and 3. Okay. Mr. Jones. Okay. My head says one thing. My heart says another. I'm going with my heart because we're playing a certain yellow team. (laughs) One and two, (laughs) beat the Lakers. There we go. You've heard it here first. Are you, are you any any reason, mate, other than it's the Lakers, and you just do not want to say that they they will win? I or, hate LA. Or do you, fan, um, do you fancy do you fancy Wendell against LeBron? Do you fancy Cole having a night? Well, we've seen it happen before, haven't we? Do you remember that mm-hmm. that game, Gary Clark? Oh yeah, um, cousin Gary, cousin um, Gary, <laughs> cousin Gary, and um, yeah, what was it BJ Johnson? A couple of other guys. Mark L. Fultz yeah. had his way with LeBron James. It can be done, and they're not invincible, the LA Lakers, although they think they are. So um, uh, even the Clippers tomorrow, let's be honest, they they just play with Paul George. Um, you know, they got a decent team. And, and, it's it's and an early Paul George tip. was out. Paul George and Serge Ibaka were both out in the last game. Okay. Besides Kawhi, okay. Kawhi Leonard being out, they they were all out last time round. 
Well, no, in Allah, they'll be back, but you know, oh, of course they will. That's We're having a season that, aren't we? Yeah. Normally no, we get pit- normally we see players rested against us, and this season it's every <clears throat> time that I the know. stars are coming back just before we play them. You know, like, Harrison well. Barnes for the Kings the other day. Yeah, you know, I know. So I mean, the Clippers are beatable. The Lakers are beatable. Um, and and like you just said, the Hawks haven't got a great record on the road. So um, you know, back in the four oh seven, bit of home cooking. You never know. So one and two. And I hope it's the Lakers. I desperately want to say one and two. I you want to say three and zero, oh, Paul? <laughs> right. Well, yeah, of course. But I'm, I'm... Go two and one, Paul. That. Just be different. Let's, let's be let's be fair. I've not had that much drink on the pod. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm believing that we're going to win all three. I would love to see it, but um, you know, I don't. I don't see us beating the Clippers. I'll be honest. Um, the Lakers is one of those where we do occasionally pull out a result. Um, and I do wonder if the the pace of our youth is actually a strength against them. I do wonder if it's a strength against them. It's um, the old men. Yeah. If they play loose like they do in the fourth quarter, you never know. You never know. And Atlanta... Uh, I, I just they just played us too well last time round. I don't the road form like you, like I like I alluded to is not great. Owen three. Owen well, three, not, and that's not tactical me. either, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I don't. I do think we've got a chance. I do think we've got a chance. Um, but I. I yeah, I, I think probably ultimately. If I would, you know, if the Lakers were the first game, if we were playing the Lakers and then the Clippers, I'd definitely be going one and two. Second night of the back to back is what I don't like yeah. for us playing the Lakers. And they'll yeah, have had a little bit of a break. So I'm I, I reluctantly and really upset at myself for doing it. I went three. More help for the Lakers are getting by putting us on a second night of a back to back. Yeah, some things never change. <laughs> some things <Absolutely>. never change. <laughs> Can I just say as well, before we move on, uh, I was listening to shout out to uh, Al and Anthony on the Ozone podcast, which we're uh, going to be a part of in, in an episode in January, which we've already organised. Um, I was listening to the two of them today talking about all these horrific late nights that they've had to have whilst the magic of playing out <laughs> on the West Coast. And they were going, oh, 11 o'clock's absolutely killing me watching the magic. And they're thinking, half of us lot over here stay up t- at least until midnight just for tip-off. If we get an 11 o'clock tip-off, we are like, yes! He goes, <laughs> even <laughs> Al said, oh, the, the 8 o'clock in Houston wasn't too bad. And I'm thinking, we got a half 8 tip-off tomorrow and we're absolutely loving it. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go shout out to those guys they're great was it Jonathan on uh, Six Man who said and we stayed up late for this yeah, yeah. Jonathan who yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's tip time for us normally mate uh, there we go <laughs> like, if, the ga- if the game finishes on the same day it started you're laughing <laughs> we, we rarely get yeah. that <laughs> we rarely get that so I've not I'm, I'm going to apologise because I've not had chance to uh write any trivia and I was going to do do it this week but uh, gee I'm going to throw over to you because you've uh, got one prepared yeah. haven't you well yeah it just, it, it, just, it just came to me and it was a bit of a homage to our guest so it's just a nice quick easy one um, I'd say so I, I'd like you to tell me guys the eight players that have worn the number 31 as a member of the Orlando Magic so apologies to Paul because you know some of them go back a bit Right, but, well, um, I'll, I'll, I'll try and help you along. Can you I can start, start with, Mr. with Mr. Ross. You can. I'm surprised you went with him first. <laughs> why is Why is my mind gone blank already? <laughs> oh no, it's not one of these. I, yeah? I'm going to say, apart from T. Ross, am I supposed to really know anybody else? Well, somebody, somebody you just talked to about. Oh, 15 I've got, minutes okay. ago. Oh, well, Hold on. Oh, sorry. I thought we were. I didn't think. Didn't know we were including him. I thought. Like, yes. Yeah. Well. Oh, yes. Okay, fair enough. He, he was the original. He was the original. All right. I've got another one. I think it's right. Michael Doliak. 
No, 51, Mike Doliak walk. Ah. Right, we're already off to a good start. <laughs> you must have had a dodgy shirt, mate. Mate. <laughs> right. Bad a few Do you then. want help? Do you want help? Yes. I always. Okay. Okay. The first one played in the year 2000. He played for one season. I believe he went to South Florida and he was traded to the Detroit Pistons for Grant Hill along with Ben Wallace. Sorry, Paul. That doesn't mean a thing to you. <laughs> hey, it's all good. Let me and just he actually say follows point, me on Twitter. Really? Okay. Yes, uh, mate, at yeah. this point, yeah. I'm happy for you to throw out a difficult question because <laughs> others who are watching and listening enjoy it and enjoy playing along. Just because I embarrass myself, it's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea, it's, mate. Okay, I'll give Mikey a clue. Um, your Oakland Raider, not Oakland, Las Vegas Raiders head coach had this nickname as his first name. Oh, Chucky Atkins. Chucky Atkins is correct. Right. Number th- uh, the next one is a centre who was born in Ireland who played in 2003. I'm making this as I'm going along, by the way, guys. Just Pat from Burke. knowledge. Pat Burke. He's got it again. He came up on, right, a, the ne- on, a, on a quiz a few weeks back. Yeah. Making a, another appearance. Okay. Uh, the next one, we had two players in 2004 wear this number. The first one was a point guard who played for Washington predominantly. Um, and his first name is a shortened of my middle name. Shortened version of my middle name. Okay, Rodri's my, no. my middle name, so <laughs> sh- shorten it. Oh, Rod it really didn't help us. I didn't know your middle name. All Rod right. Strickland. Rod Strickland is spot on. Um, the next guy, oh my God. All right. What island do we live on? Great what? Britain. Britain. Right. So that's the Britain first name. Britain Johnson. Britain Johnson. Gosh, we're going well, guys. Um, the next person played between 2006 and 2007 and was part of the Dwight Howard and this person, Adonal. Twin Towers. No. No. And he's from, was he from Serbia? He was from Serbia, oh. I think. He wasn't from... Second pick in the draft, wasn't he? Yes. Oh, what's his name? The opposite oh, to light. Milicic, Darko Milicic. Darko Milicic. And, and the last one then, I think Mikey was <laughs> going to say it. He, uh, he used to play for the oh, Golden State Warriors. And then he played for the Magic. Donald. And I think he's a I think he's a community ambassador now for the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. Foyle. A Donald Foyle. Yeah. So the See, round, just, that rounds it off. I just need a little bit of help just to stop the monkeys symbols <laughs> smashing together. <laughs> <in> <laughs> <my head>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Jeff Turner, Chucky Atkins, Pat Burke, Rod Strickland, Britton Johnson, Darko Milicic, a Donald Foyle, and Terrence Ross. Good work, go, G. Bobby. Nice one, mate. Nice one. Like that. Like that. I'm happy to have just took part even momentarily. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Paul. <laughs> hey, don't apologise, mate. I'm happy for him to say it's uh, everybody likes the quiz. Everybody likes playing along. So it's all good, mate. It's all good. So I've enjoyed this. It's been fantastic for us to finally get back together and uh, do do what we do. So to everybody. Thank you for listening and watching. Please subscribe to the podcast uh, and to our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the notification button. Uh, leave us a review and comments. We we love to hear from you. It helps us. It helps us build what we do. Uh, visit our website orlandomagicuk.com. The elf says. The elf says to visit our website um, on game days and what um, where we have. A game preview, we have game reviews, all links to the podcasts. Uh, uh, if you're looking at visiting, there's a v- great visiting page that we've put together. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and now on TikTok, all at Orlando Magic UK. So until next time, from Graham, Mikey, and I, go magic. <laughs>